Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I, in I invite you to rise as we welcome the flowered cross, our symbol of resurrection. We sing, Thine is the glory. Have a seat, please, my friends. Welcome to worship at Golden Ears United Church, our second Easter worship service of the day. Um, about 30 of us gathered down this morning at Haney Wharf uh, to greet the sunrise as we celebrated Easter um, with an informal sunrise service. So if you're back after that service, congratulations, well done. <laughs> You're all still a little shaky and a little cold. It was pretty cold, but it was beautiful. So welcome to you if you are worshiping with us for the first time. Welcome to you if you are back after a long time away. And welcome to you if this is where you worship every Sunday, whether in person or online. We are one community in many places, thanks to the gift of live streaming. My name is Leanne. I'm the minister here at Golden Ears, along with Leslie, who is our minister with children and families. Speaking of children and families, today we are celebrating communion, and so, so instead of having our learning time um, at the invitation uh, to go out to Sunday school, children and families are we welcome to head off to Sunday school or to stay with your uh, family, whatever is most comfortable for you. But they will be back in time for communion so that we can all celebrate together as one large family. Um, our music team uh, also was very early up this morning. So Diane Lines, our music director, uh, Estelle Cormier on percussion, and Sam Ellington, our vocalist and guitarist. And our tech team, we have Anne and Mitch Sandborg on the live stream and PowerPoint, and Tony on sound. So um, we're in for a treat this morning. Our choir uh, has a, a very special song we've been working on, and it's just going to be the most glorious, beautiful service. And the flowered cross is like one of the highlights of the year. I want to say a special thank you to Sandra. This is not an ad, but a thank you to Sandra at Westgate Flowers, who every year um, gives us flowers to help us get started. So thank you, Sandra. Bless you. Before we begin worship, we acknowledge that we are gathered on 
the historic, traditional, unceded territory of the Catesy First Nation and the Kwantlen First Nation. This morning down by the river, we were reminded that the territory is not just the land that we're on, but the, the river that flows through it, the Stalo, and the air above us, the, the birds that fly, the, the, the fish that swim, all of this is part of the territory of the Catesy and Kwantlen First Nation, and we give thanks for the ability uh, to live in this land. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation. So let us prepare for worship and sing this little verse. Here in this place the new light is streaming Now the shadows vanished away See in this space our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in our spirits in sound of our name think of a moment when something you lost is found again and you can scarcely believe your eyes think of a moment when your fear was proven unfounded and you were surprised by joy this moment this morning is such a moment we resigned ourselves to the worst on Good Friday, and suddenly, life turns around. So come this Easter morning to be shaken from your conviction that nothing can change your situation. Come if you look at the world and feel overwhelmed by its chaos or disillusioned by its promises. On this morning, we remember how the grieving women, friends of Jesus, going after the Sabbath to anoint his body, arrived at the tomb, did not find Jesus' body, but an empty tomb where angels in dazzling clothes asked them, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Don't you know the Savior is risen, just as he promised? Imagine them returning home only to be disbelieved. Surely it was just an idle women's tale they were telling. But imagine Peter, holding on to hope, slipping out, maybe hoping the others wouldn't see him, running all the way to the empty tomb to see it with his own eyes, to return home shaking his head in wonder and awe. So come to worship, prepared to hear their witness. Come with open hearts and open minds and believe the testimony of the women who were the first to proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite Branton Price to come and light the Christ candle. The tradition of the Paschal candle is a very ancient one. It's where we get our um, practice of the uh, Christ candle. An early morning vigil would be held and a fire would be lit, and from that fire, the paschal candle representing the risen Christ would be lit, and Price is going to light it now for us. There you go.
So if I seem discombobulated, it's because I am. <laughs> the presentation that I sent from my computer did not appear on my iPad, so we'll figure that out. Lord above. <laughs> Let's pray. Holy and living God, like a tomb's darkness that gives way to light, open us this day to newness of life. Open us to your love, to your acceptance, to your forgiveness, to your peace. Open us to one another and to possibilities that you have in store for us. Give us hope in the future and a passion for life here and now. We pray in the name of the one who destroyed death, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So as we sing Halle, 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 um, anyone who wants to go out to Sunday school with Leslie is welcome to do that. Um, otherwise, as I said, you're welcome to stay with your families, whatever you like. And the Sunday school, for anyone who doesn't know, is um, out this door and up the stairs. And uh, yeah, so we're going to sing Halle, Halle, Halle. And it is, uh, for those of you who are reading in the hymn book, it is 958. Lenore is our reader this morning. That's if Milo lets her. I don't think I've ever tiptoed around a microphone before <laughs> in a wheelchair. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Art.
Bound for the gallows, a dead man walking. To love came a calling. Oh, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Six hundred, thought it was over. An answer to prayer, the voice of the Savior. I really do believe in resurrection. My iPad woke up. <laughs> Sam, I'm commandeering your uh, music stand. All right. So if the saying is true that the early bird catches the worm, let them eat worms, I say. I'm currently a vegetarian and I'm going back to bed. I am so not a morning person, right? Yeah. Maybe you are someone who jumps out of bed so excited to greet each new morning. Instead, I get dragged into consciousness, kicking and screaming. This morning, as I resisted getting up when the alarm went off and I, I ended up like pulling the plug out of the alarm clock and it was still going because it was on a different one. Um, <laughs> like that's how much I fought it. Um, I thought, why couldn't the scripture have been early in the afternoon on the first day of the week? No, it's early in the morning. Anyway, once a year, once a year, I can manage it. Once I got over my initial grumpiness, 
thank you God for coffee, I was filled with excitement and eager anticipation for what the early morning would bring at our beautiful um, gathering for our sunrise service at Haney Wharf. Um, Kathy was saying today that this has been a tradition begun at Hammond United Church over 20 years ago. I myself have participated in at least 12, probably 13 or 14. Um, we did miss a year or two because of COVID, and that was so sad. One of the years we did gather in the, um, the memorial garden here and had people come to flower the cross, and it was the first time we had seen uh, people face to face and not through Zoom, and it was just such a beautiful experience. So, but there was no such eager anticipation in the women who rose before dawn that first Easter. They probably awoke lamenting and grieving the task that was at hand, still in disbelief that Jesus was dead. They were numb, but they had a job to do. They had to go to the grave, to the tomb, to anoint the body of their friend and teacher a day after it had hastily been laid to rest in a tomb. You see, he'd been killed on the Friday in the most humiliating and awful way, a crucifixion, a tool of torture of the Roman Empire. And he hung on that cross until close to sunset on that Friday, when Joseph of Arimathea a wealthy and powerful member of the council who had disagreed with the others about the plot to kill Jesus went to Pilate to beg for his body to be taken down and to be given to him to bury. It would have been sacrilegious for the body to stay on the cross because the Sabbath was approaching. In the rush to bury him before sundown, he had been lovingly but hurriedly wrapped in a linen cloth and put in this new tomb um, by Joseph of Arimathea. And after he had been laid there, a heavy stone was rolled across the entrance, sealing in the darkness and the death, but not the grief. For that was carried so heavily back by Joseph and by the women friends of Jesus who had witnessed all of this. But now the sun was getting low and the Sabbath was about to begin, so they hurried away. The women were amongst Jesus' disciples who had followed him from Galilee. In fact, they had been close by through all of the events of these days. Peter had denied knowing Jesus and had fled, as had the other 11. They'd gone into hiding, fearing for their own lives, but no one paid attention to women, so they could stay and watch and witness and grieve. After they watched the tomb being sealed, they returned to the place they were all staying to prepare the spices and ointments to wash the body with, but they couldn't do anything until after the Sabbath. That Sabbath, all of them gathered together in that room, mourned and remembered Jesus, telling stories. Oh, do you remember the time that Jesus turned all that water into wine? Remember the time there was the big storm in the boat and that he was fast asleep, oblivious? Remember the time he walked on the water? Remember what he said about loving your enemy Remember all the people he healed, including me? He said some pretty strange things, but we loved him. We thought he was the Messiah. And now the morning has come, and they're off to do their duty to honor their master's body in death, just as they had loved and honored him in life. So with heavy hearts, they set out to the tomb to honor him one last time with spices and ointments to prepare him for burial. But they could not believe their bloodshot eyes when they got there to the tomb because the stone at the entrance of the tomb had been rolled away. And with great trepidation and concern and perplexity, they entered the tomb and found it empty. What? 
Who took his body? Here they are in the tomb of their beloved teacher Jesus, when all of a sudden two figures appear out of nowhere in the dark tomb, lighting it up with their dazzling clothes. And now the women go from perplexity to terror. And they hit the ground, their heads in the dust. I always think it's funny how artists portray angels as beautiful and serene and people look calm in their presence when the biblical reality is that if you encounter an angel, you're terrified. They're terrified and they're disbelieving. They're wondering what on earth is going on. Usually, when you encounter an angel, just for your information, in case you ever do, the <laughs> usual practice is for them to say, do not be afraid, <laughs> right? <laughs> do not be afraid. Don't be scared. Chill out. <laughs> but these angels are not like other angels. They don't lead with a comfort. They don't even open with, hallelujah, he is risen. Instead, they open with chiding, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? What a good question for us to. Are there dead places in our lives of faith that have us stuck, that are keeping us from seeking out the living Christ? Are there dead places in our church life and tradition that keep us stuck instead of seeking after the living Christ? But then the angels tell them, Jesus is not here, he is risen. From death comes life. But that's not the end of it. The women, totally energized from this encounter, buzzing, run back to the upper room where the rest of them are hiding and share the news of all that had happened to the rest of the disciples. And were they excited? No. The men greeted them with utter skepticism. The, the translation is very generous. It says, women's idle tales, right? They thought they were women's idle tales. They thought it was gossip. But the word in Greek is leros, the same word where we get delirious and delusional from. They thought the women were delirious. Now, if we were to translate the Bible into modern English, and the disciples didn't believe, they responded to the women, they'd respond with mansplaining. <laughs> That's crazy talk. That's fake news. But quite frankly, who would blame them? Resurrection that they're claiming isn't simply a claim that Jesus' body is resuscitated. It's not that God applied paddles and said, clear. This is God creating an entirely new reality. Resurrection breaks all the rules. It upsets the apple cart. It overturns our orderly lives. So if you are someone who finds resurrection a little hard to get your mind around, a little hard to believe, know that you are in good company. It's because you, along with the rest of the disciples, recognize the incredible scope and implications of this claim of this new reality. When God was raising Jesus from the dead, God was creating a new reality, overthrowing death, overthrowing sin and all that would oppress us and declaring for once and for all that life is more powerful than death and love is more enduring than tragedy. The rest of the disciples, they didn't get it. But Peter, he gets it. Something, somehow our friend Peter is motivated to get up and go to the tomb and check it out for himself. Maybe he slips out so that the others wouldn't see him. You know, maybe he's a bit embarrassed that he actually believed the women. Over the past six weeks at Golden Ears United, we've been following Peter's journey of faith and we've walked alongside him as he's gone from 
uh, being called and feeling incredibly unworthy, to being um, a bold uh, disciple, to being the one who actually gets it, that you are the son of the living God. And then the utter tragedy of him denying Jesus right at the hour of his need, not just once, not just twice, denying Jesus, denying that he even ever knew him or had met him. And he ran off. So maybe if Jesus was risen, this was Peter's chance for redemption. Luke describes it all in one breath, like it's like one sentence. Peter running to the tomb, stooping to look in, seeing the linen wrappings, wrappings and then going home amazed, stunned. Could it really be true? I think he walked home the whole way wondering, could it really be true? What he said was going to happen has come true. Is it true? Peter goes home wondering, and it's in, the, it's in the wondering itself that the meaning of resurrection lies. The resurrection only makes sense when we suspend our cognitive understanding, our scientific worldview, and when we remain amazed, when we marvel at the love of God that reversed death itself. Now here's the thing, we are not called to explain away the resurrection, to offer proof line by line. This is the case for resurrection. Now some people that may be uh, very much how they feel they are called to live out their faith. I think, I think we're called like Peter to live in wonder and amazement. Could it be true? Is it true? It's true. Belief in the God of resurrection can really, truly change the world. Sharing the story of resurrection of what God has done and is doing in your life and in the lives of people you know is not easy. And you may bump up against some of the same challenges that the women faced. You may be discredited, discounted, and written off. You may feel tongue-tied and unable to explain theologically. But I don't think that resurrection is something that the first response is to explain theologically. I think it's something that you are supposed to get here, not just here. Perhaps it's an offering, an invitation to do as Peter did, to invite people to go and see for themselves. Perhaps if we ventured out of our comfort zones to tell people that we have experienced Christ working in our lives, maybe one person will be curious enough to go and see for themselves to seek out the risen Christ. Words alone are inadequate to communicate the presence of the risen Christ. You can only witness it and witness to it. And that's why we celebrate Easter, not just on one day of the year, but in the church year, Easter is a whole season. The Gospels give us different accounts of the testimony, the witness um, of the risen Christ appearing to his disciples. In an amazing um, experience of forgiveness and peace in the middle of fear, Jesus somehow makes his way through locked doors and greets them. And in another story, the risen Christ shares bread and fish on a beach with them and offers Peter the chance of redemption by asking him, Peter, do you love me? The risen Christ offers the wounds of his hands and feet to Thomas, who cannot believe unless he touches. The risen Christ breaks bread with strangers and opens their eyes. In all of these ways, the risen Christ will be revealed. And I may be wrong, but I think it was in the remembering. Remembering is putting back together. In the retelling of the stories of Jesus, 
that the disciples could see that the risen Lord was in their midst. Because I think it's true for us too that it's in looking back we can see most clearly how God is at work in our lives. Often in the moment we're too close, we're too confused by the events that are swirling around us. It's later when we look back, when we tell someone about it, that we see there was maybe something else going on, something deeper happening, something bigger was moving, something called God. You see, I don't think I have to convince you of the reality of resurrection. If you have had an experience of unfounded hope and joy in the midst of sorrow, you've experienced resurrection. If you've shared food with the hungry, you've experienced resurrection. If you sat with someone in a ho- by a hospice bed and who can smile with gratitude for a life well lived, instead of shrinking in fear, or if you can return in some way to a time or place of great pain and realize that it has been healed, that God has freed you from its power, you've known the resurrection. When you've messed up beyond all hope of making it right again and somehow have been forgiven, or you've thought that God had abandoned you only to discover that God was finding you anew. You've lived the resurrection. The story of Easter is not just about life after physical death. It's about life in and through the deaths that life brings us. It's about nothing being able to separate us from the love of God not life or death or power or principalities, not now, not ever. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Alleluia. Now the green blade rises from the buried grain Weaving in dark earth, many days has lain Love lives again, that with the dead has been Love is come again, like wheat arising green In the grave they laid him, love by Slain, thinking that he would never wake again, laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat arising green. Forth he came at Easter like the rising grain. He that for three days lane raised from the dead my living lord is seen love is come again like wheat arising green when our hearts are wintry grieving or in pain your touch can call us back to life again fields of our Have a seat, friends. So we no longer pass offering box, or not, we do pass off. We have offering boxes at Golden Ears at both doors. We don't pass plates anymore since COVID. And I know I got a, a, a letter after uh, Christmas from someone who was visiting that, like, why is no one passing offering plates anymore? Um, 
partly because of the whole COVID thing and the, the, the touch, that was how it started. But once we came back in person, we really realized how much more welcoming it was not to have an offering plate um, put under your nose and uh, the sense of being guilted into putting something in it. So if you would like to make an offering to support the Ministry of Golden Ears United Church, bless you, we appreciate it. There are offering boxes at both ways. People also give by e-transfer, um, lots of different ways to, to give. Um, and people give not just their um, financial resources to support the ministry, but their time and their love and their, uh, their many, many gifts. Last night, um, volunteers from the church gathered to feed, I think, 63 people uh, came in person, and then many more meals were wrapped up and sent home with people at the community meal. And I tell you, every single one of those people who come, whether they prepare food, whether they serve, whether they wash dishes, whatever it is they're doing at the community supper, um, they are so much more blessed uh, by what they do uh, than, and the, um, the response from the community is just so beautiful and um, People so appreciate a home-cooked meal and that it's not just food for the body, it's food for the soul and uh, it is community. So that is one of the many ministries that you're supporting uh, when you support um, the ministry at Golden Ears United Church. Now, do we have a... No, we don't. Okay. Let's dedicate the offering as we sing uh, this verse, This is the Day. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Sing it hallelujah. Sing it hallelujah. Sing it hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad. Sing it hallelujah. Let's dedicate the gifts. Generous God, we offer the gifts of this community as our testimony to your glory and as our commitment to be your disciples. Bless our gifts to your work in the world and to your reign here on earth. Through your blessing of our gifts, may we be people whose lives and acts proclaim new life in Christ. Amen. Now, has someone let the Sunday school folks know that we are almost ready to celebrate communion? Okay. While they are uh, coming back to us, just a few words about how we um, celebrate communion. The bread that you will be served is gluten-free, and the wine is non-alcoholic grape juice in individual little... Here they come. Come on in. Come on in. Look at that. So happy. I hope there was chocolate at Sunday school, was there? <laughs> so, as I said, uh, the bread that you're served is gluten-free. The, the wine are individual cups of um, grape juice, non-alcoholic. So when the invitation comes to come forward, uh, the greeters will meet you at the row and guide you up the center aisle where you'll be offered um, bread and juice. And then you're invited to return back to your seats down the side aisles. If you have a mobility issue, or if you just prefer to stay in your seat and be served there, um, that's okay. Flag down Leslie as she's uh, going around, um, being able to serve people in their seats. And what else can I say? 
during the, during the um, communion, there is a song, You Are Holy, You Are Whole. Many of us know it. Um, and there's also a sung communion that is responsive. And the words will be on the screen um, for you to, it's call and response. Friends, this table set before us has a place for every single person who longs to taste the Easter promise of new life. The invitation is extended to all who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, a better life, a fairer world. There is a place at Christ's table for anyone who asks. God's love that is shared here knows no boundaries, no gender, no age, no orientation, no status. Nothing is a barrier to you being invited to this table. The bread and the cup that is set here is sacrament to remind us that in Christ we share a vision of the world as one table to which all people are invited and at which all people are fed. When the risen Christ met two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus, they only recognized him at the breaking of the bread. The risen Christ invites us to join together at this table to recognize him and to be recognized by him. And once those disciples on the road to Emmaus recognized Jesus, they had to run back and tell everyone they knew that Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to God. Let us give our thanks to God. Hallelujah, thanks and praise, ever-living God, worker of wonders, maker of miracles, author of all life and giver of life eternal. You have created and are creating all that we see, hear, touch, and taste. You have spoken to us through the ages through prophets like Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and Elijah and Deborah. You have made yourself known to us through the sacred stories that comes to life as we tell and retell the love story that your people have had with you. You loved us so much that you sent Jesus, your love made flesh, whose life, death, and resurrection taught so much about your radical, unconditional, never-ending love. And so with the choirs of angels and with our siblings who gather in praise around the world, we sing your praise. You are holy, you are whole, you are always evermore than we ever understand. You are always at hand. Blessed are you coming near, blessed are you coming here to your church and wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You are holy. God. 
heart. Sing Hosanna to our God. Sing Hosanna to our God. In communion, we remember, we remember Jesus and we remember. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. And while giving thanks, you broke it and said, On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you Through this bread and cup, Jesus lives within us. In our words and in our actions of love to each other, Jesus lives among us. We remember Jesus' death and we celebrate his resurrection as we remember all those people and places that still long for new life. Just as the women went to the tomb in grief, today we pray for all of those who are grieving. Especially, we pray for Betty Ann Dempsey, grieving the death of her sister who died this week. And for Ev Heffernan and her family, grieving the death of Jesse who died this week, Jesse, her son. We pray for George and Cynthia and for their family as they grieve Joan's death. Bring them and all who grieve peace and hope in the Easter promise that death is not the end. And just as Jesus brought healing, we pray for the sick. We pray for Jen Woolley, for Sandra, for Jackie, for Adrian, for Jennifer, Art, Mary, Olga, and all those we name now. Heidi. Yeah. 
We pray for healing and hope for them and for their caregivers and loved ones. And we pray for people living in places in the world that are torn apart by blood, shed, and war. For the people of Gaza and Palestine and Israel, the people of Haiti, Ukraine, Sudan, Yemen, Myanmar, and countless other places in the world where there is war and bloodshed that are forgotten by the news cycle, but not forgotten by you, God. Strengthen our commitment to be people of peace. We pray for all who are hungry and going without, all who are homeless or precariously housed, all who are recovering from addictions or who are still imprisoned uh, in active addiction. We pray for those who are struggling with mental illness and for those who are incarcerated. And in this quiet moment, we pray with thanksgiving or concern, out loud or in silence, all the prayers that are on our heart this day. O oh God, who makes all new thing, all things new, we offer these people and places that you might make them whole with your love. We also offer this bread and this cup, and by sharing them, we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Source of life, pour out your spirit upon us and upon this bread and this cup so that we and they may be symbols of new life, hope, and joy for each other and for the whole world. We gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as a child turns to a mother, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us forever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, this is the bread of life, the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ the cup of love poured out for you. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will the servers please come forward?
Let's join together in the prayer after communion. Loving God who rolls away stones and whose love bursts forth into the world, thank you for rolling away the stones of our hearts and filling them with your love through this feast. May we be empowered to go from here, joyfully proclaiming the good news that Christ is risen, that cross. Amen. So before we go out, um, I know it's not written in the bulletin, but life and work of the community, we don't have an awful lot of announcements, um, but I do want to invite everyone who would like to join us for coffee and goodies in the, the church hall, which is out this door um, and down the corridor and into the big room at the end. We're a really friendly bunch, and um, I invite uh, those of you who are longer term to look around, see if there's a face that you don't know very well, and maybe invite them to join you for coffee, get to know them, and then introduce them to other people. And um, yeah, so over the past year, the, the group of people that gathers for coffee, sometimes I think there's more people there than are at the 10 o'clock service. I don't know how that is possible. Anyway, um, and then the other announcement is uh, that our um, thrift sale will be having a spring fling thrift thing, and the information about it is in your bulletin. It's uh, next Saturday, April the 13th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and uh, it's a massive sale, so uh, we invite you, it will be in the, in the church hall, to uh, come to that. Um, those from the church are also invited to, to bring baking. The information about that and when to bring it and what to do with it is, uh, is also in the bulletin. Kathy uh, is here, and she can give you more information about that. And I think that's all I have to do for announcements. <laughs> uh, hmm? Oh. I always forget something, but that's okay. Yes, the concert. Our Sacred Bronze Handbell Choir um, is having a spring concert, a Bells and Friends spring concert on Saturday, April the 27th, um, here in the sanctuary at two o'clock. Um, we will have guests, uh, we'll have the handbells, we'll have um, guest flautist and harpist and opera singer. And Kevin um, is singing as well. Yes. Um, and uh, tickets are adults and teens $15, seniors $10, children 12 and under are free. Um, so if you want a ticket and um, want to know more about the event, Mary Hampton is here and she will be at coffee time and can answer your questions about that. Um, and please come out. If you haven't heard handbells before and you're curious, um, it's just the most beautiful thing that the, um, the sound of the bells produces music in, in a way un, unlike any other instrument. It really is quite extraordinary. So anyway, enough for announcements. Uh, we're going to sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today, during which the cross will be processed out and onto the church lawn, where it will um, remain uh, proclaiming to all of Maple Ridge who drive past on Dudney Trunk Road that Christ is risen. So I invite you to rise, embody your spirit, and join in singing.
wanderers, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious hearts on your sleeves. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting the good news. Go in love. Amen. Amen. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the world the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is us to do. 